Using a cinema camera to take actual photos is just not the main reason why you invest in a cinema camera. But what if you could get the best of both worlds? I got the FX30 for this reason. I wanted a camera that has very good video capabilities, but I also still wanted to take photos. And to be able to have this all-in-one camera without breaking the bank, well, I can say I'm not disappointed. Although this is heavily video centric, it still functions as a hybrid camera since it takes photos in both JPEG and RAW file formats. In this video, I'm sharing my photography experience with the FX30. I've used this camera in three different scenarios, a full-time creative session, a food session, and self-portrait. I'm pulling up edited JPEGs here since at the time of this recording, there's still no support for the raw files in Lightroom. For the first session, it was a couple's photo shoot date. We took turns taking photos of one another and we were all just using the FX30. We were shooting close to the golden hour and the FX30 performed just as many recent Sony cameras would do. I and face autofocus were there most of the time and locked onto the subjects fast. Yes, they refer to the FX30 as part of their cinema line but the photo capabilities don't fall short of their other hybrid cameras. I had my focus set to wide, so there were a few times when it focused on the body before it actually found faces and eyes. Besides not having the viewfinder, the FX30 felt good in the hand and was nice to shoot with. It's like the same size as the Sony's full frame A7S III or FX3, but just has an APS-C sensor. This session was great, as I had no difficulty getting the shots I wanted, especially low ones. In regards to low light, I photographed my friend's cookies in a studio setting and was also pleased with how it turned out. When I first started out in photography, I used to think that APS-C just wasn't good enough in low light. This was one of the biggest reasons why I upgraded to full frame. It's been years since then. So when I saw the photos from this cookie session, I definitely felt less FOMO. Now that I'm coming back with more knowledge about lighting and shooting with prime lenses, it's just so exciting to see the images that I'm getting. For self-portraits, I went to the park and took pictures of my wife and I. Since we could rely on the autofocus for the face and the eye, I was able to control the camera with a Bluetooth remote. I just had to set the drive mode to self-timer of two seconds, and there we go. At first, I was disappointed to hear that Sony didn't include IR capability in this camera, but fortunately, I was able to get a third-party Bluetooth remote to get this to work too. It's just not easy photographing and filming yourself without one. The FX30 may be an APS-C camera, but the size of it is that of a full frame. I mean, look at this thing. It's got a great beefy grip on it. Sorry for the vegetarians out there. I mean, it's really just comfortable in the hand. As you can tell, you can fit all of your fingers on this thing, as opposed to most APS-C cameras where at least the pinky is just hanging off there. One thing to note about this camera in regards to photography is that there's no mechanical shutter or burst mode. There is an electronic shutter on this camera though, and you can crank that to one over 8,000th of a second. However, for the burst mode, you're just able to take bracketed photos for HDR photos later on, but that's it. Another downside again is the raw files. Still unsupported by Lightroom, and they said it could take up to 90 days till it is supported. Until then, I'm just stuck editing JPEGs. Not the worst thing in the photo world, but definitely not my preference. So I still got my A6400 in the meantime. If you want to get more wireless usability, unless you've got a Bluetooth remote, you have to use a Sony Edge app, which I'm not fond of because of how cumbersome it can be to connect everything. Or re and also trying to hope you have little to no delay when viewing real time. Although cinema cameras aren't meant for photography, does it matter to you if you can edit RAW right now? Like, like do you photograph both RAW and JPEG or just JPEG? So the autofocus that we've come to know Sony for is still very much present in this camera for both photos and videos. Without a doubt, you'll be able to have a capable camera in your hands for either of these purposes. Whether or not you consider the Sony FX30 as a true cinema camera or not, there's no ignoring how video capable this thing is, especially for an aspiring filmmaker or content creator. However, if you're trying to catch more action shots on an APS-C format, you may want to look for a more photo-centric camera, like the A6100, A6600, or even the new ZV-E10 that has burst shooting at 11 frames per second. Click over here to see more content on the FX30. Thanks again for watching, now go out there and shoot for the life that matters. See ya!